But Chris, why is, why is the integration of electric vehicles and solar and storage, uh, I guess, such, such a game changer? How do, you, how do you think that's going to affect things? Yeah. Well, you see the electric bill change when they get an EV. So you have a customer, you sold them a system, and maybe it was perfectly sized three years ago. They went and got an EV. Like a, a rough rule of thumb, your electric bill like doubles. And increasingly, we're seeing putting the energy back on the grid, you may not get paid a lot for it. So, so the energy management system, because it's integrated, will say, okay, well, I'll put that extra energy into the vehicle. The conversation that is often had, at least locally back home, is, well, hey, you can add, expand, and wanting to have the ability to bring in, hey, I have a solar edge inverter, how can I add a battery possibly in the future? Maybe incorporate bi-directional charging, whatever those things are. So I think that kind of goes back to the original statement and what we've seen as a common theme here is sort of the, the, the ecosystem platform that manufacturers are pushing towards, which in certain markets might also give you the ability to, hey, start here and expand and grow over time as is needed. Could be with additional PV, yeah. You know, I know them two and three, there's some stipulations in that in California, but in other places could be additional PV, could be battery, bi-directional charging, And, and it could be EV. So another interesting yeah. thing, we, well, you see the electric bill change when they get an EV. So you have a customer, you sold them a system, and maybe it was perfectly sized three years ago. They went and got an EV. Like a, a rough rule of thumb, your electric bill like doubles. Yeah. Obviously, it depends on your commute. Yeah. But electric bill will double. You may say, oh, I'm going to sell you an EV charger. I'm going to sell you additional you know, PV to, to, to support that bill. Um, and the nice part is with, with these platforms, we've got a mode you know, in the app that, that's very, um, that people really like right now, that's charge your vehicle with excess solar. Mm. So if you ever have a time of the day where it's sunny and you're not using everything locally, it increasingly we're seeing putting the energy back on the grid, you may not get paid a lot for it. So, so the energy management system, because it's integrated, will say, okay, well, I'll put that extra energy into the vehicle. You know, and, and really look at how you use every, you know, every electron that's generated, use that in the home and, and use it in the most valuable way. But I think EVs are, are really interesting, you know, go back to, to sell to somebody um, and, and add, add solar, maybe add storage, maybe add an EV Absolutely. charger. Well, let's talk more about that because that's another sort of hot topic in the industry here this year yeah. is the, the advent of bi-directional EV charging. And, and kind of the overlap of the electric vehicle and the home renewable energy system really is all part of one home system, right? Because if you think about it, you know, Dan, you, you have a Tesla electric vehicle, mm -hmm. right? And so your, your electric vehicle is almost like a, it's like a battery on wheels, right? And sometimes that battery is plugged into your home system, sometimes it's, it's on the road. But Chris, why is, why is the integration of electric vehicles and solar and storage uh, I guess such, such a game changer. How do, how do you think that's going to affect things? Yeah. Just a quick word from our sponsor, Savant Power and the Savant Energy Management System. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus storage system, then you're going to want to have maximum visibility and control of how much energy you're harvesting, how much energy you're storing, and how that energy is being distributed within the home. The new Savant Power System allows you to dynamically control which circuits are on and which circuits are off, depending on battery state of charge, allowing you to extend your battery running time during a blackout. The system also includes an integrated electric vehicle charger, allowing you to charge directly from solar or from the grid or a combination of both. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can visit the Savant Power website or click the link in the description below so that you can get in touch with an installer right away. Yeah, so I'll uh, I'll have to have to contain myself a little bit because it's a, it's a very fun talk, topic to talk about, but you know for, for for me you know like the engineering me I I see a vehicle and I you know recognize it's also for transportation, but to me it's like a mobile battery pack, right? Sure. So so when you look at it as a mobile battery pack, you, you think about um, how, how you can use that, and and I actually had a, a gentleman, a utility engineer, in our booth just a little while ago, and we were kind of talking about this. Because as a load, it can be intimidating because you think about how much energy they can draw. But the, the saving grace on the vehicle is you have a lot of flexibility on when you charge it, right? So, so you know, he was saying, oh, yeah, we can have a rate at like 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. And it's very easy to schedule that. So, yes, it does need a lot of energy, but you have a lot of flexibility on where and when you charge it. And, and we've gone to um, our existing charging solutions and pull up the data it's very interesting to see how much energy they're actually using. It's, it's not very much. Because the model with an EV that I didn't realize at the time was, it's not like a car where you let it go to zero and then you fill it up. 
it, it never goes to zero. It's like, oh, I go to work, I charge it, I go home, I charge it. And, it, and, and the vehicles are like bouncing around between like 90, 100% state yeah. of charge. Um, so, so you have that flexibility. But the other side that I, I think we're really in the beginning stages of, and, and, and we, we announced at the show, so we have a, a bi-directional charger. But w what that will enable is now for vehicles in the future to participate a, as a grid asset. So you can control when you charge it, but then you can dispatch it. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I, th I think I'm realistic about it. I, I don't think car companies are going to jump into this right away. And you, you get a Tesla, maybe you get a 70 kilowatt hour battery. Oh, I'm going to drain all my battery and make $5. You know, I, I think they're going to be very cautious. Like, you know, I'll let you use 5% of it. I'll let you use 10% of it. And, and then when they understand how it impacts the entirety of the life, so they'll, they'll create like a safe boundary conditions. Um, but when you look at the, the batteries and the vehicles, they're getting better. People are using terms like the million mile battery, mm -hmm. right? And so if you have vehicle batteries that are gonna go hundreds of thousands of miles, then they'll, then they'll start letting you say, okay, use it. And, and, and I think, you know, th and that's when, when the, the manifestation of it really being a mobile battery pack, like very valuable to the grid. Um, and and I, I think that's really going to be interesting. But I, I think it'll take years for, for that to, to slowly unfold and get that comfort level. Yeah, we were talking a little bit about that yesterday as well, where I, I think, and I don't remember the exact numbers, but you know, the Ford F-150 Lightning has that capability today. It's a 120 or 50 kilowatt hour battery, but there are limitations on what Ford has said you can use within that battery. So just because you own a Model S Tesla, 100 kilowatt hour battery doesn't mean you have 100 kilowatt hours to use. It'll be interesting to see what the auto manufacturers allow and, and the adverse effects of the cycling and how frequently those are happening and what that does maybe to longevity of the vehicle battery. But like you said, the million mile battery is kind of the, the, the target or what's been yep. talked about. Um, and I, I can't help but laugh earlier when you made a comment about how you're not typically, you know, you're not discharging to zero. I remember I had a lot of friends when I first got my Tesla that said, oh, how long does it take to charge? I'm like, well, five seconds. I just plug the cable <laughs> and, you know, and just let it go. Because most of the time, it's an act I'm doing as I walk into the house. It's and passive. It's not active. Right? Yeah, Where you're I, standing at the pump. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to look at it. Well, you, you, know, you touched on another issue here, too, which is that you know, in order for this to really work to its full potential, we need buy-in from the auto manufacturers as well. right? We, we as the solar industry, can't, can't sort of force it. We need to agree on standards. And that's probably one of the questions that I get when we talk about this bi-directional EV charging is, well, which standard are you going to support? Are the auto manufacturers going to keep up? So can, Chris, what's your opinion as far as, you know, what role do standards play? Why are standards yeah. important in making the most out of this technology? Yeah, so standards are like absolutely the foundation and are very central. Um, because you expect when you have a vehicle and you have a charger, you, you expect those to work with each other. And so, you know, I'd say like the, the charging standard is, is good, right? You, you know you have a vehicle, you can go to a charge station, you can charge your vehicle. So it can be a diversity of vendors mm -hmm. of the charger and it can be a diversity of vehicles and that works, that works very well, I, I would say. Um, now, on bi-directionality, it, it's, it's not quite there. There is a, a standard that we commonly talk about. It's ISO 15118-20. There was a new version of it that came out, I think it was May of last year, and it substantially defined kind of the interaction uh, for bi-directionality. And so, you know, all these charges, before they transmit any power, they handshake, right? So they connect to each other, and, and the vehicle, you know, the, the voltage of the vehicle changes with state of charge. So we say, like, oh, it's a 400-volt battery pack. That, that's a general voltage, but it changes with state of charge. Um, so, so the standard for bi-directionality is um, not, I would say, 100% complete. And, and so often, I think, and we've seen this in earlier stages in the solar industry, the standards tend to go on a multi-year cycle, Technology can change a lot from year to year. So I, I think we're at a period right now where there's a little bit of catch up happening on the standards. Um, so I think we're, I would say we're close, but we're not, we're not quite there. And so that's why um, I, I would say that's a, it's a pretty big uh, barrier to, to widespread adoption. But I think, we're, I think we're within a couple of years of at least the standards becoming more, um, more uh, specific on, on, on the interface and the communication. Yeah. Yeah, I think that standard also applies to uh, and we talked a little bit about this, and I think you alluded to this about the solar edge bidirectional charger, the actual charging port of it itself, standardization, right? Because it's hard to explain. I mean, if I was talking to my grandmother today, or even my mom and dad today, and said, hey, electric vehicle, a lot of times they might pull in thinking, okay, I'm used to just putting this thing in the tank, and there you go. But not having a standardized system today can make it quite difficult, especially if you're trying to talk about mass adoption. People just don't know how to use them. They don't know 
try telling somebody, yeah, there's a Tesla charger there, but you can't use that. You have to go to this one. You know, it's just difficult. So standardizing, I think, becomes really beneficial. And Tesla really made that. We saw, like, just in a matter of weeks, you know, Tesla kind of basically, they, well, they renamed it the yep. North American Charging Standard, which is interesting. So they just, just, just by name, they created their own <laughs> standard. Um, but then everyone fell in line. Like, I and mean, you saw the press releases every day, GM, every, Ford. everybody, so everybody fell in line. You know, techno technologically, it, it's a nice connector. The, the way they use the conductors, it, it, it is a good, a good platform. Um, but, but I think, you know, maybe that actually, you know, in hindsight, looking at it, it may actually help force the standard, you know, to get everyone on a common standard. Because we still run into it, you get a little bit of Chidemo, you know, which is a little bit more Japanese in origin, you know. Um, so I, I think anything that forces those standards will help. Excellent. Well, I know there's certainly a lot of consumer demand for us to solve this problem. Yes. Right? Because yeah. consumers, and I talk to them all the time, they're very excited about uh, being able to use their electric vehicle sort of to its full potential as an integrated piece of the home renewable energy system. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, Feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the US residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.